concerne l'assistance, nous avons quelques dispositions particulières avant de commencer. Nous demandons à l'assistance ici de mettre l'importance sur le river ou sur le mot de suspension pour ne pas perturber la séance. Et voilà cette expérience. Voyons comment les choses vont se retrouver. D'abord, nous allons donner la parole après d'avoir présenté le nom de Jérémie au candidat qui a 20 minutes pour nous dire la quintessence de son travail. Après ça, nous allons demander aux deux directeurs directeurs et co-directeurs de donner leur avis sur le travail tel que présenté. Après ça, nous allons donner la parole à notre collègue qui est de Cara, qui est de Cara, et le collègue Amine Nari, et après Amine Nari, le membre de ceux qui va évaluer le travail. Nous avons notre aîné qui vient de Mekalami. Voilà. Cela dit, et à mon extrême droite, je commence par là, c'est celui par qui toute la coopération agissante entre l'Université de Monégal et l'Université de Donné a vu le jour. On ne le présente pas. Et c'est par lui aussi que cette tradition de la thèse a eu lieu, en tout cas au département d'Angers, à l'Université de Donné. Je vais dire le professeur Pamela Mersan de Fond, qui a géré beaucoup de personnes, y compris celui-là qui a l'honneur de présider cette séance cet après-midi. Je voudrais tout d'abord dire qu'en principe, dans les règles académiques du CAMES, le plus jeune ne préside pas à cette séance-là. Mais l'honneur m'a été fait par les aînés, pour que je préside. Donc je peux dire que ce n'est pas une dérogation que je le préside, étant le plus petit dans le grand que vous avez. Et à ma droite, la proche, le maître de conférence, Amine Maré, avec qui nous avons chéri ensemble le maître de l'ONU. Vous m'avez parlé d'acheter euh, un livre de grammaire, comme on disait, c'est bien riche. Ici, il avait la, la latitude d'aller au grammaire et comme il veut. Dans la vie, j'ai fait un chef travail. À ma gauche, je ne le présente pas, il ne se présente pas. C'est là que je me suis fait baisser. Et non seulement cette tradition, nous le connaît cette valeur, mais il est professeur titulaire de littérature américaine, oui, de littérature, études américaines dans le contexte du Bénin, de littérature et civilisation. Et cher aîné, on a à cette séance. Toutes les fois qu'on a besoin de lui, il le répond. Toutes les fois qu'on nous sollicite, il est là. Peut-être vous ne le connaissez pas facile. C'est l'angoisse de l'écran de l'Université de la Méditerranée. À mon extrême mon droite, je ne le présente pas. Les études américaines, après le professeur Omar Nessan Gopo, c'est lui, le collègue que tu as parlé, le maître de la conférence, qui a fait déjà beaucoup de choses et qui continue de, de faire ces choses-là pour le bonheur de la génération montante. Chers collègues, merci. Et à vous et vos professeurs, nous, pourquoi je, je dis merci Parce que vous avez voulu que je sois dans ce jury. Vous avez voulu que je préside à cette euh, séance. Merci encore une fois. Bien. À, à toi, cher collègue, cher ami, qui arrêtez d'être docteur si les conditions sont réunies. Merci. Et cela dit, et je voudrais la 
alors qu'on met sa parole au directeur. Around uh, the problematic 
the methodology, the theories, the result, uh, a brief uh, uh, summary in French, and a conclusion. For the problematic, Mr. Chairman, this dissertation entitled A Metacritical Approach to Black Representation During the Harlem Renaissance and the Civil Rights Era offers through uh, the lenses of other critiques a critical appraisal uh, of the various criticism made by both blacks and whites of the way black used to be portrayed during the Harlem Renaissance and uh, the Civil Rights Era. More specifically, this dissertation evaluates aspects of representations of uh, blacks. So far, uh, many books have, uh, and dissertations have been written on the concept of uh, representation, and I believe this one also shed light on the idea of uh, representation. Mr. Chairman, my methodology. As the title of my dissertation suggests already, uh, I did not use any fiction or any particular writer per se to appraise the way people of African descent are variously depicted. What I managed to do is to rely on critical works produced on fiction that discuss the concept of uh, black representation. Closely, I have collected articles, essays, prefaces of books from literature philosophy, sociology that are relevant to the discussion of black representation. And as an example, for instance, uh, some of uh, the members of the GBT have written articles on humanism, on the poetics of representation, and uh, the negotiation between negative and uh, other brothers. So I took hold of these uh, articles and represents the idea of uh, black representation. Mr. Chairman, uh, in terms of critical things, I've deployed two uh, school of thoughts, mainly post-colonial criticism and uh, womanism. Post-colonial criticism actually questions the way former colonized nations are often represented and stereotyped by the colonizers. Uh, actually, this uh, school of thought owes uh, a big debt to uh, Michel Foucault, Frank Fanon, Rumi Baba, uh, the speaker, and most importantly, Edward Said in his groundbreaking work, Orientalism. In the idea of in the school of thought for post-colonial, uh, post-colonialism, three key ideas have to be highlighted. Orientalism, superternity, and uh, mimicry. Actually, the reason why I've deployed this uh, school of thought is that it has helped me see how uh, African Americans have been uh, portrayed negatively and then how to resist back. Because uh, in the American literature, African Americans have been negatively portrayed. Uh, and uh, I, although some critics argue that uh, uh, post colonial theory should not be used in terms of African American literature, I uh, bow or I owe uh, a very thank you to Frank Fanon and uh, Michael Upward who argue that uh, in the quest for a pre colonial cultural matrix, black uh, people in the United States and Latin America face a problem not fundamentally uh, different from that of uh, the uh, Africans and more. I hope that our effort to include Black America in the post-colonial debate is not only intellectually valid, but politically necessary. And further, one of the critics argues that uh, if uh, the idea of subjugation, social marginal marginality, exile, and the uh, linguistic, of course, cultural disposition count for anything uh, in the definition of a colonized identity, it is hard and even impossible to see how African Americans can be excluded. The second theory of use, which is womanism, uh, actually, womanism uh, is a neologism uh, coined by uh, the American Alice Walker in her way in search of uh, Alice Garland, womanist 
prose, but I need to recall that uh, the concept of humanism uh, comes from uh, the theology of Jacqueline Grant, Delores Williams, and James Hall Cole. In effect, humanism theory seeks the welfare of the entire African American community, men and women, children, and adults. Uh, so, the humanist theory, by definition, is committed to uh, the survival and wholeness of the entire people, female and male. And uh, to summarize the concept of humanism, Mr. Chairman, allow me to put uh, Tony Morrison, who, uh, during the day, she was to be awarded the Nobel Prize of Literature, if I could have good memory in 1993. Tony Morrison said, I quote, my work requires me to think about how free I am as an African-American woman writer in my wholly genderized, racialized, and uh, sexualized world. Mr. Chairman, the results that this dissertation has come up uh, for. My dissertation argues that uh, when it comes to the way African Americans are depicted, whether in literary works, mass media, or in any other means, a little has changed. One of my findings is that blacks are often presented by outsiders stereotypically prior to the Harlem Renaissance. Therefore, people of African descent have to repossess themselves, represent themselves and acknowledge that uh, as human beings, uh, they are not able to do it all, but human beings are dual. Uh, so blacks are, if I may put lungs on heels, ugly and uh, beautiful too. But further, one needs to be critical of oneself, and in so doing, one will avoid deviation, ethnocentrism, and logocentrism. More, it is not safe for a people to pretend to be something else they are naturally not. Because there is nothing more tragic than people torturing themselves to be different from their natural unchallengeable selves. Self loathing, self denial is destructive. Therefore, people of African descent, or American, African American particularly, must be proud of who they are, dig beneath of themselves so as to have roots, what prevent them from developing and keep the positive ones. And uh, if I may put uh, James Brown, who said, I'm black and uh, proud. Mr. Chairman, allow me uh, to say some few words uh, in French for the audience's sake. Monsieur le Président du Jury, Monsieur le membre du jury, ma thèse est titulée A Metacritical Approach to Black Representation during the Harlem Renaissance, qui en français pourrait être traduit comme une approche métacritique de la représentation des Noirs lors de l'époque Harlem Renaissance et de euh, l'époque des droits civiques aux États-Unis, analyse la façon dont les Africains américains sont peints dans les œuvres littéraires américaines. L'objectif euh, du présent projet de Michel est de donner euh, une approche métacritique de l'image des Africains américains dans les critiques littéraires, blanches et noires. Cette étude critique la représentation négative des Blancs à l'égard des Noirs, apprécie également euh, critique la représentation des Noirs par les écrivains noirs eux-mêmes et enfin apporte une image beaucoup plus réaliste des Africains américains. Comme méthodologie, nous avons utilisé les œuvres critiques écrites sur la fiction caricaturant l'image des Noirs. Dans cette thèse, deux théories critiques ont été utilisées, à savoir la théorie postcoloniale et le romanisme. Toutes ces deux approches critiques démystifient la supériorité des Blancs sur les Noirs. Les stéréotypes de l'homme des hommes. Les résultats auxquels nous sommes parvenus sont les suivants. La représentation de l'homme noir dans les autres blanches, les masses médias et autres, c'est peu améliorée. 
Les Africains américains peuvent être fiers de leur identité culturelle, noire, tout un changement de mentalité, tel comme le disait euh, le poète Langston Hughes, nous sommes à la fois beaux et laides. Mais c'est cher, hein? as an African proverb says, wherever there is a big tree somewhere, small ones find on it to reach the sun. Uh, I consider you as this big tree, and I being a small man, and I believe that your contribution, your comments, your questions uh, will help me improve the quality of my work. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I am done, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for being in time. This is an examination for being in time. That is, you have used. Uh, it is a good mastery of time. We have a little time, we have granted that with some units, which I think the panel will consider it. And now I would like to ask your supervisor, beginning with Dr. Mubuko, to give us his impression. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be part of this defense, if only because I've been so close to the doctor to be for many years. And when he came to me with a topic, we considered a number of different things. Um, uh, in here we are today, I should say right away that the job was done under the supervision of Associate Professor Fagel and myself. Um, personally, I enjoyed working with the candidate, I know at times he felt so desperate, he wanted things to take shape as quickly as possible. But, you know, at long last, at long last here we are. Uh, I'm glad he mentioned Dr. Bono in this dissertation because. Uh, one of the, uh, his talk, doctoral dissertation on a topic that is pretty close to this one, but he covered a much larger, longer time period. And we realized that actually we could have focused on a shorter time period. And Prof. Uh, Melina was here, was on that defense committee. And he and some other members of the committee suggested that we should in the future have somebody focus on the same topic but within a different context. So when Mr. Soutifa came. Actually, he came originally with something different. But because I was about to retire, I could not be the sole supervisor. And the arrangement was that I should team up with Prof. Afaga, which is what we did. Metacritical approach to black representation. The idea originally was to look at the way blacks saw themselves, the way they represented, the way they perceived themselves, and the way other people perceived them in their works of art. Poetry, fiction, drama, and other art forms. Uh, all 
devotees projected a certain image of blacks. And the Harlem Renaissance, we all know, was a period of cultural rebirth. That the blacks realized that they had a lot to offer, much more to offer than white America was prepared to admit. Uh, but because a number of situations got together, there was a concatenation of facts that brought to this revival. All of a sudden, blackness became beautiful. Because originally black, black was not beautiful. Not many people were black and proud. You know. But because some factual conditions were met, people started to develop a new self-perception. That is, they started looking at themselves in a new light. And as a result, they started developing pride in themselves. They started taking a new look at their cultural values. And many of them made it clear that they were not saying that blacks had no shortcomings, blacks had flaws in their characters, but they were just like other regular humans. They have their good sides, but they have their ugly sides as well. They are capable of being beautiful and capable of being ugly too. I don't know why when you translated that into French you say both a let. Why did you say let? I, I, I'm not sure why you why let instead of let. But you know, probably during the deliberation who <laughs> will look into that matter. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what you did is that you didn't want to take a couple of books, a number of books, fiction, drama, poetry, or whatever, and then focus on the idea of black representation in those books. But you prefer to look at the topic from a critical standpoint. That is, what black people or non-black people writing on American writings see blacks like. And that's the point here. It is not, it is a metacritical statement in the sense that it is a critique of critical reflections uh, because the idea is to highlight what people perceive blacks to be. This representation is very important. It's very important because um, many people agree that Art does not change life. That is, art will not do anything to change survival strategies. This is what people think. But black people think otherwise. Black people believe that art can change the course of people's lives. And this is one of the common things that we have in black literature, black African, and black American. The literature, the art forms that we produce are survival strategies. It seems like we can't survive without art forms. So this is probably one of the key differences between what we do as people of black descent and what non-black people do. Uh, Personally, I enjoyed reading this thing, this 
satisfied some petty, petty things that need to be readjusted, corrected here and there. And you extended the time period on the state use, extended it to the civil rights era. That is roughly speaking the early 1960s. Because again, there is a revival, there is a rebirth of the way things you know, went on personally, and this transpired in the uh, work. The major thing there is that. In the 1960s, black women parted from black men. That is, before the civil rights movement, black men used to stand for both black men and white men. Sorry, black men and black women. That is, black men made it clear that they were speaking on behalf of the whole race. But from the 1960s, black women decided that not everything black men had to say was of interest for or to the black women. So if you look at American culture and civilization, you'll see that although Many black women in the past defended views that were different from the ordinary view of the mainstream American uh, philosophy. Well, from the 1960s, it became more striking that there are differences. Black women were perceived as well, they perceived themselves as a different entity because men, without realizing it, had been fighting for their main interests. And women were bold enough to point, to point things to them. You people say you've been fighting for the whole race, but look at what you're doing, look at what you're writing. If you take a close look at what you're doing, you are actually fighting for your interest a male group. So black women started fighting a different fight. And you know, I think if you choose and it's workers, womanism, it, one reason is that it brings together the different trades. Because Alice Walker is not saying in his woman, her womanism that women should fight for their interest as a community of women. No. The main point of womanism is that we should fight and make sure that we remain the same community consisting of both men and women. Either we make it together or we miss the point together. So this is very important. All these things have changed the perception of blacks within the black community and also by non-blacks. Many of these issues have been addressed by you and I think one other part that I like is that you laid an emphasis on the role of what the boys would call the talented thing, that is the educated people. They lead the community. They are the community leaders, the educated people. They are the ones who can indicate the way to go because a community that has no leader cannot be, you know, cannot perform well in many fields. Mr. Chairman, I'm making all of these more comments simply because I wanted to highlight why I like this.
this film that inspired them to very things, the things that need to be addressed here and there. But on the whole, I think it's done a great job. Now, I know that what I'm saying needs to be revisited by the by uh, Prof. Associate Prof. Fadler because he was uh, uh, the co-supervisor and we did not need quite often to discuss the matter but uh, the kind of had been going up and down between the two of us so he was the one who took the message to him and took his own back to me and at the end of the day, this is what we have to offer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for this crowning that is being done so to avoid troubles in the country. We understand why you do so. Thank you very much. Now we are giving the floor to Professor, Associate Professor Fadula, who is the co-supervisor of this work, for probably another defensive comments on behalf of the candidate. Uh, there for me, you have the floor. Thank you very much for the Ministry and Chairman of this uh, Defense Committee. I will uh, begin by Thanking Professor Nubuko, who has accepted me as a co supervisor of this dissertation. Uh, uh, you, made me, you made me a doctor some 20 years ago, and you wanted me to give my effort that we can make him a doctor too. Uh, I know you will supervise more than 40 dissertations. Uh, there is no need for you to, to have me on board, but still you wanted me to do it, so it was a pleasure and an honor for me to work once more with you. Uh, thank you very much. To associate of uh, Larry Amin, thank you for coming on board again. This is a bump table for you, two dissertations uh, on a single day, it is a good uh, entry point for, for you, Prof. Medina. Whenever you call upon me, you are ready to answer our call. Thank you for being always ready for this job. Uh, of course, I have to acknowledge this is the first time we are sitting together on the high table. More will come. Thank you for accepting this. Uh, I'm going to, to talk about some aspects not addressed by Professor Mubuko in his comment. And because the defense is about celebration, and more than that, a defense is about offering pieces of advice to the candidates who that you can chat his professional life or career. It is solely on that basis that I'm going to speak. Uh, I recognize that I was put on a very, 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 very tough, tough, tough position in, in the writing of that dissertation. Number one, Prof. Mubuko is my father. He is my mentor. Number two, he wanted me to supervise this dissertation with him. And number three, I think so is like a time between the you know, two teeth. So it was a very, very delicate position for everybody and the behavior I was expecting from Sue was very, very high. At that time I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed, but overall it is good. Uh, Prof. 
Mr. Kipo was talking about some petty, petty things that need to be addressed after a defense. It is all your mistake. I won't begin by celebrating if I know the workers positive aspect, but Prof. Mbukwa in his intervention also stressed the fact that you wanted to, to be there to be done quickly. A dissertation is a bumpy road. You cannot make it quickly. A dissertation is a bumpy road. And I'm talking to the other candidate in the room, not to you alone. A dissertation is a bumpy road. You cannot want to have it overnight. It is a very, very bumpy road. So, because you are you are in a kind of hurry, that is the reason why we may, people may have more to say about this work. So avoid this in your professional life. It is like last time when a candidate brought a, a copy of his uh, manuscript to me saying it is good for publication. And I said, are you sure? He said, yes. OK, let me have a look at it. He has to rewrite that paper again. He has to rewrite it again. So it takes time. I recommend that you, you become very, very, very patient when you are approaching your intellectual uh, things. Talking about some of your habits, let me go straight to the point. At the beginning of this presentation, the chairman wanted Prof. Mbukwa to introduce you to the, to the audience. And he said, I'm not prepared. That is, we didn't give him the needed information. I think what I, I do not tell in our relationship is your detachment. There is no cause that your detachment which is not good. This very morning, Three hours ago, three hours ago, when, the, when we were going for the list deliberation, I put the question right to you. So I don't have your biography, your bibliography. Okay. I need to introduce you. All we profit about doing, and you say yes. You see? Things will go against you if you don't take uh, the necessary precautions. I know uh, Mr. So to be a very, very hard and dedicated student, worked very, very hard. Uh, the level of his English will suggest this to you. Uh, I supervise his master's thesis. I have about 10 or 15 candidates, so uh, I supervise his thesis. And when it's down to writing the dissertation, I think he had the impression that I'm, I'm acting probably so. He went to Prof. Mbukwa, it was a great pleasure for me, and they came up with a very, very original, brand new topic. And they work, and I thought, probably the first or the second draft of the essay. I went to it and made comment and was expecting him to bring back the integrated comments, the brand new text. The thing I know next is, I don't want to talk about this publicly here, but the thing I know is, okay, here we are. So the be, be patient in your future and the thinking. Now, the work is good. That we can have a more improved version of it. So, this is what I would suggest. You have crafted a very, very good piece of dissertation. And I'm ready to help you improve upon it. What 
what I said this morning, I'm not going to say it here. Then we will see the rest. So, Prophet Mahmoud, thank you for taking up this challenge. I'm glad to have done this with you. Mr. So, I think you are, you are a dedicated person. All you need is to be more patient, more dedicated, and you can accomplish very, very much. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to monopolize the floor. Let me hand it back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. So. Your supervisor and co supervisors have spoken. What do you have as comment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I defend my supervisor and my co supervisor for their comments, contributions, and remarks. Uh, I must confess that uh, this defense I will produce, incorporate all these remarks and contributions to making uh, my way better. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are you giving the promise that for the future you will be closer listening and handling um, whatever has been done so far? I have to say to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and the members of the jury for your insightful comment and contribution. And as you promised, I wish that after this defense, I'll get in that with you. And I do promise that uh, I'll be closer to you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman of the board. Close out your stories. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Grâce de docteur S. Lett, option littérature américaine, et a décidé de vous décerner la mention très honorable. I wasn't expecting such a big audience, but their presence already suggests that uh, I have people behind me who could support me in whatever situation. So I thank them all. And actually, my topic, which is a, uh, a metacritical approach to black representation during the Harlem Renaissance and the civil rights era, is an important issue because uh, it helps uh, demystify or debunk concepts of uh, stereotypes of black vis-a-vis -vis white, and I think it's a, it's a good job. So, uh, uh, Mr. Cameraman, I thank you for your wonderful job equally, because uh, uh, you came on time and you have done it. May God bless you, and I think he will reward you. And more importantly, uh, I thank my brethren in Christ, they've come, 
they have supported me in whichever way. So may God bless everybody.